Today, the first aircraft that attempted to rescue men from the capsized Seacorp power shared why it was such a difficult job. The fourth day of questioning provided additional pieces to the puzzle of what happened that fateful night. News 10's Neil Zarang is live in Homa with what he's learned. Neil. Good evening, Darla. It was really heartbreaking testimony listening to these two men who really thought they could save the people who were clinging to the sinking ship, but none of them risked the waves whenever this aircraft lowered a lifeline to help. You cannot be certain that they would have survived in the water. The only certainty was they had a better chance in the water than they had on the boat. Bristow helicopters heard of the Seacorp power capsizing from a customer and quickly mobilized from Lafouche Paris at about 7.15 p.m. By the time they arrived, it was already dark. We did put eyes on the survivors on, on the vessel at that point in time. We seen them in the little, little area and they were waving. Both men identified this area as where men were holding on because of all the railing in the way and the possibility of the boat lurching and pulling the helicopter out of the sky. The air crew determined the best option was to convince three men to jump off the ship where they could be grabbed in the water and pulled up. But after a few minutes of trying that, nobody got in the water. The Coast Guard boats asked them to try something different and drop things that could be used to float and communicate. Once the people on the ship turned on their radio, the news was not good. One of them came back and said, I can't swim. Because of fuel and rain damaging helmet communications, the aircraft made a stop at base. While doing so, they learned one person fell into the water and did not survive. 15 feet to a person who doesn't survive tends to burn itself into your brain. Jason Jennison said he was 95% sure that it was Captain David Lede. When they returned, two crewmen were behind a hatch, and the hoist team made their final plea. I told them to tell the survivors, it's not getting any better. You know, this is your strongest minute right now. It's cold. Your vessel is going down. It's, it's settling in the ocean. You're never going to be stronger. You're never going to be warmer than you are right now. This is, this is the time that you have to go. And I believe that's the time that one of the, one of the survivors on the vessel said, OK, we're going to go for it. That's when they put me back in the water, um, and that's when the Coast Guard 65 from New Orleans came out, and we departed scene so they could take over the rescue effort. According to the helicopter crew, they focused their efforts on searching the surrounding area after the Coast Guard took over air rescue. They said about 20 minutes later, the Coast Guard decided it would not be a good idea to hoist any more that night. By the next morning, the hatch which the two crew members retreated to was underwater. The outcome that we wanted didn't happen. So, and with that, I think that's the worst thing because in our parts, we, I guess you can say we failed. Terrible news from them. We also heard from the final inspector and the final surveyor of the C-Corp hour when it got its annual checks, and there were no major deficiencies found by them in those last checks. The minor deficiencies were quickly fixed. Reporting live in Homa, Niels Rang for Caleb Y News 10.